Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Hola. Es un placer estar con todos ustedes aquí. Gracias, Sandra y José, por su trabajo. Muy lindo. Uh, my name is Rafael Bemperad, and I am a co-founder of BBMG, and we're a brand and innovation consultancy from Brooklyn, New York. So hello from Brooklyn. And I'm really delighted to be here today to share some work we have been doing about tracking some big global consumer trends and shifts in culture. And um, I'd like to start just by framing, I think, the moment of opportunity for all of us here at Sustainable Brands. The very idea of sustainable brand is fascinating. Because on one hand, in the world of sustainability, as you heard all day today, we're thinking about designing systems and business models. We're looking at supply chains and value change and thinking about how we organize business um, and design for business. And at the same time, when we think about the world of brands, we're thinking about storytelling and human emotion and relationships and connections and deeper aspirations. And it's only at the intersection of sustainable and brands that we can create the systems and the stories that come together that can change our future. And what I'd like to do today is share five human aspirations based on research that our team at BBMG and our partner at Globescan, and you're going to hear from Christoph in a minute about additional work that they're doing. And what we've been doing for the last five years is we've been tracking the intersection between people's deeply held values and beliefs and their behaviors in the marketplace. And we've studied 22,000 consumers across 22 countries for five years. And what I'd like to do today is to share the rise of a new consumer that we call the aspirational consumer. So how many of you have had, I have no doubt, a meeting that asked the question, what do millennials think about our brand? Or what does Generation Z think about our digital strategy? And while it's very important to think about demographics and millennials or Gen Z, that's perfectly fine, we actually think that we may be looking for answers in the wrong place. And there's deeper questions and deeper opportunities for insight and learning and creativity and design and brands that's gonna come from a deeper set of questions. And so what we found is the rise of the aspirational, who is not defined by birthday alone, but rather defined by the ideas and the experiences that shape who we are. And if you think about the first 16 years of the 21st century, we've had 9-11, we've had perpetual war, we've had economic crises, we've had mass migration and an increasing awareness of economic threats as weather patterns are changing and we see the business community starting to talk about climate in a different way. And in the context of all of this intensity, we have witnessed the rise of the most caring, creative, collaborative, and community-minded generation in history. And so what I'd like to share today is what we can learn from a generation that we call aspirationals that transcends one age group um, to think about what it means for the world of sustainable brands. So how we found the aspirationals um, is that we finally see a moment in history where the right thing to do and the cool thing to do have come together. And sustainability has moved from being an obligation to being a desire. And that provides an opportunity to take sustainability and brand and bring them together in ways that are more delightful, that are more collaborative, and that are more human than ever before. So how might we seize this moment of opportunity where the right thing to do and the cool thing to do have come together? So understanding the aspirational, um, what we did is we took the 22,000 consumers with whom we spoke with, with Globescan, and we plotted them on two axes. So the y-axis is materialism. It's things like, I love to shop. I care a lot about how I look and my style. Um, I'm an influencer of my friends about trends and brands and causes. I see brands as a badge for my identity and I feel empowered by brands. That's the materialism axis. And on the bottom axis is social and environmental values, sustainability values. 
And for a long time, those who have tried to do sustainable or green marketing, I believe, have been targeting the wrong consumers. We've been talking to the 22% of advocates um, who we believe are primed to hear a sustainability message. But there are three problems with, ad with the advocates. The first is that they're the most cynical and skeptical about companies and their claims about sustainability. The second thing is that um, advocates are only 22% of the marketplace, so they're not large enough to be a profitable, sustainable engine in their own right. And third, they don't particularly like to shop. But advocates really matter. We have to honor advocates on the substance of our sustainability policies, on our practices, what's happening in our supply chain. But we've made a mistake in thinking that they were our audience to take sustainability to scale. What we found, however, is the rise of the aspirational. And these are numbers from the spring of this year, 2016. 40% of the global marketplace that is the most likely um, to shape culture and behavior, to create trends that make things desirable and cool, and to shape the behavior of the masses. And so the unlock, the opportunity from our research, is to honor the advocates, those most committed to sustainability, on the substance of our policies, but start to design brands, to create campaigns, to develop relationships with aspirationals. Because when we engage the aspirational, we shape culture, we shape behavior, and we take sustainability to scale. So who are the aspirationals? By the numbers, they are most likely to be Gen X and millennials. So 35% are millennials, 34% are Gen X. But as you can see, they transcend age. And they're also, um, as you can see here, the average age globally is 40. They're half men and women. Half are about 49% uh, are parents. And uh, the largest market is India, and you're going to see that here's the 22 countries that we studied, and in blue, these are markets where at least 40% of the population is aspirational. And so if you look at India, 51%, China, 50%, South Korea is 50%, Indonesia, Nigeria, Ghana, the high 40s, Australia, 40%, as well as Canada. And then if you think about the developed markets, here in Spain, it's 37% of the population are aspirationals. In, in uh, the UK, it's 35%. And the United States, it's 35% as well. And so in the developed markets, it's uh, about one third or more of the population. In the emerging markets, it's upward of half of the population who are looking for a new way of participating with brands. Um, and aspirationals are really defined by desire to meet their own needs in a way that doesn't harm anyone else or do any damage and to be part of something that's bigger than themselves. And as you can see, there's a yearning, particularly in emerging markets, for a new way of having a relationship with brands. What I'd like to do today is share five human aspirations. These are big shifts that are happening in culture that can help us think about how to create value in a new way and how to design brands, how to design products, how to design experiences in a way that align with the future as defined by aspirationals. So the first of these shifts is something we call abundance without waste. And this is a desire for more experiences with fewer resources. And at the core, abundance without waste is a paradigm shift from a scarcity mentality to a new creativity reality. And ultimately, this is a shift from the old way of looking at sustainability, which is all about no, 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 don't, 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 stop, stop, stop. It felt like medicine and trade-offs and compromises to a new creativity that's finding ways to create more with less and to create more opportunities for meaningful experiences with less material possessions. The shift from ownership to access. And so examples of abundance without waste include a subscription model. So a new business model like Latote, which is an apparel company um, in the United States, which allows you to rent clothing for $49 a month. You go online, you pick outfits and accessories that you love. You can wear them once, you can wear them for a week, you can wear them for a month, and when you're done, you send it back and you can pick out a new outfit. And so it's an unlimited closet for $49 a month. We heard this morning about Intermarché's inglorious fruits and vegetables, um, selling things that don't look perfect for a discount, which created a phenomenon. It, increases, it increased foot traffic at Intermarché grocery stores by 20%. 
On the bottom left, you can see Patagonia's war and wear commitment to make durable, quality products that last for a long time. If they're broken, they'll fix them for free. And if they've used their full life, they'll upcycle them into new materials. And here on the bottom left is Original Unverpackt, which is a grocery market in Germany, which has no packaging. So they've designed beautiful, reusable um, bags and boxes and, and cases, and you go to the grocery store and you use your own packaging over and over. These are all opportunities to create abundance without waste, which is more experience using fewer resources. The second shift is called truly as you are, which is welcoming imperfection as honest and beautiful. And this is a paradigm shift um, that's moved from flawless to honest from trying to conceal the challenges that you face to revealing the realities and, and from controlling the conversation to inviting people in to solve it with you. And in a moment where everyone at the, you know, in their hands with their phone has access to the world's information or a video from a factory floor in your supply chain could go viral and be in everybody's inbox in, in, in moments, it's redefine the rules of trust and transparency. And aspirationals, like all humans, don't expect perfection, but they do expect honesty. They believe that the truth will come out, and that's okay. But what they want is to see you truly as you are. And great examples of truly as you are is a really interesting fashion company in the United States called Everlane, which has made radical transparency a brand idea, a brand value proposition. So what Everlane does is they give you the price for any t-shirt or pair of pants or skirt. They'll tell you every single part of the cost, how much the raw materials cost, how much it costs to sew it, how much it costs to ship it, how much they charge for marketing and their markup. And they want you to know who made your clothes, where they came from, and the price behind everything you buy. And so radical transparency has become a badge of the brand's um, commitment to trust and transparency. Everyone knows uh, the Dove Real Beauty campaign, which is all about celebrating us truly as we are. In the 10 years that Real Beauty has been around, the brand has grown from a $2 billion brand to a $4 billion annual brand. And then my favorite is, this is Beyonce, as you can see. And we work with L'Oreal Paris. She's one of the spokesmodels of L'Oreal. She is the epitome of glamour. She's one of the world's most iconic divas. And yet, if you look at her documentary on HBO, and um, she welcomes you into her home with no makeup on. She introduces you to her daughter on a couch in her living room. And so there's something very powerful happening in culture. One of the most iconic divas on the planet welcomes you into her life truly as she is. And it's not that she isn't glamorous in life, but she wants you to understand her humanity and to see her truly as she is. The third is called Get Closer, which is all about connecting with the people behind the brand promise. Increasingly, it's peers like us, people like you and me, who are the brand. We are the brand product. We're the service. We are the experience itself. If you think about new business models like Uber or Getaround or Airbnb, it's people like us who are the brand. And what we're seeing with this paradigm shift is a transition from product to peers. It's moving from a transaction to a relationship, and ultimately from made by machines to made by humans. And great examples of getting closer, of course, are Etsy, which is a phenomenon, an online marketplace for makers all over the world. There are two million um, sellers um, in 100 countries around the world. They make $2 billion a year with products that are made by peers. Another great example um, is Hyatt Denim, which is in the Welsh town of Cardigan. In an old factory that had moved away, they started selling jeans. And in every single pair, as you can see, the artisan who made the pair of jean signs the label. Here it's Ellen. Um, here in Spain, uh, Kellogg's is starting to tell the stories of the farmers in their supply chain, not only so that we know where their products are coming from, but to start to elevate the stories of innovation 
and the commitment that they're making to growing the local economy. And then finally, Airbnb has a $20 billion valuation simply by renting out our rooms and our homes um, and helping you belong anywhere. So something very powerful is happening um, when brands allow us to get closer to the people behind the brand and the stories that they represent, their creativity and the community that they represent. The fourth is called All of It, which is all about experiencing freedom beyond binary choices or what we would call false finish lines. And this is about aspirationals who want to be, want to have, and want to do all of it. And it's a paradigm shift from fixed to fluid. Um, it's a belief that our identities, the expectations for our gender, how we show up in roles in society, in family, at work, are more fluid than ever before. It's a paradigm shift from some perfect dream of a better life where you climb a career ladder to enjoying where you are right now in the journey. And from other people's expectations of happiness or success to defining happiness on your own terms. And we see this in fashion. This is on the upper left, uh, a brand called A Gender. It's Selfridges and Company, which is a retailer in the UK that has created A Gender, which is a fashion brand for men, for women, and everything in between, breaking gender boundaries and creating designs for all of us. Um, on the top right is a brand called Wild Fang, which are two Nike executives left the company and created a new fashion brand for women who want to raid men's closets. And in the middle, you have Without Walls from Urban Outfitters, which is all about versatility, designing for all the roles and all the experiences we have day to day. So from a morning workout to going to work to hanging with your friends at night, versatility to experience all of it with their clothes. And then in the bottom, you can see the Google Workplace is a great example where work and play have come together. And it's not because they just want millennials to have fun by playing ping pong. It's the reality that when you welcome a whole human being to work and allow them to show up um, as all of their life um, and their creativity and their play and their performance create a virtuous, positive cycle. And so the aspirationals are looking for all of it and defining success and happiness on their terms, where they are today in the journey and not some perfect success in the future. And then the fifth is called Do Some Good, which is all about agency and impact in the everyday. Aspirational consumers um, want pro brands to stand for more than a product benefit. They want brands to take a stand and put a flag on the ground, to have a perspective that's bigger than the product itself. And what we see with all of it, I mean, would do some good, is a paradigm shift from issues to values. It's moving from campaigning for political causes to identifying small things we can do in our own lives every day that make our lives a little bit better, but also um, add up where millions of us doing the same things can create very profound changes. Um, the idea of do some good is all about not just what I can do, but what we as millions of our peers and aspirationals can create by joining forces together. And great examples of do some good are brands like Kind, which is a, a food company, which is all about doing the kind thing and inspiring random acts of kindness. We have an underwear brand in the United States called Thinks, um, which is underwear. It's very stylish. It's um, designed in ways that are extremely iconic and very bold and proud, but it's designed in a way so that women who have their periods have a lot of absorption in the underwear. They work with women in Uganda to make it and then use education to destigmatize menstruation because many women in Uganda miss a week of school or a week of work just because of their menstruation. Um, we had the privilege of working with a retailer in the United States called Target to create a concept called Made to Matter. It was a curation of 31 brands that had healthier and better ingredients, as well as made a positive commitment to improving society. In the first year, um, they grew from 16 brands to 31, and in 2015, they sold $1 billion um, by packaging and telling the stories of products that were made to matter. And obviously, we all know, as we've heard already today, that Tom's Shoes and others like it, like Feed and others, allow you to do some good with every purchase so that the act of purchase becomes an act of purpose. 
At the end of the day, thinking about these five human aspirations, these five shifts, all about abundance without waste, truly as you are, getting closer to the people behind the brands, seeking to experience all of it, and doing some good um, with every interaction with the brand, leads us to a new paradigm about how we even think about brands in the world. And it's a paradigm shift from the goal of a brand being to get a consumer to buy something to the opportunity for a brand to inspire us to be something. And it's ultimately not having brands for consumers, but creating brands for humans. Our belief and our biggest bet, and I think the greatest opportunity of our generation, is that we have our shot in this moment, a chance to take the best of our humanity and change the way that we do business and take the size, the speed, and the scale of business and serve humanity. That's the opportunity for sustainability. That's the opportunity for brands and when we bring them together. So thank you very much for the chance to share this. We'll have a workshop later where we're gonna apply these five shifts for designing things um, that allow Samsung, in particular, as our case study, to design brands for humans. Um, but what you'll see here is an opportunity to think about consumers in a different way, which is not as just a demographic, but as human beings with deep human aspirations to serve their own interests in a way that help others and to be part of a community that's bigger than themselves. And we, when we do that, we can harness the best of our humanity and the best of business and change the world. Thank you.